Hello, this is part two of the assembly video for the K1450 preamp circuit boards. Part one was fitting the resistors. This is trimming them and soldering them. Looks a bit of a mess at the minute, but if you just work around whatever's accessible, and you'll keep getting more and more uh, in different places as you go. It looks less and less like a insane hedgehog. I try and cut the leads so they're more or less flush with the edge of the tinned area for soldering. And these are a very, very old pair of stupid expensive Lindstrom cutters. Uh, to, they're nice to work with, but they're not necessary. Um, I mean, these Toolcraft ones off eBay, I think they're 120 mil. They're fine, they work very well. Um, or these are some relatively cheap ones from RS. This pair's rather badly worn, but uh, they still work. Um, I think they, the, but these are both about 12 or 13 pounds. Uh, the, the most important point is these are all flush cut. There's no bevel or angle on the underside of the jaws. That leaves a much more accurate cut rather than it being recessed into the blades. They're also much better for wire stripping if you, if you pull that way on, on an insulated wire as the flat side doesn't tend to try and slide out the insulation. It gives a good grip. As I said, these work just as well. You might have to use a slightly different technique to get as close in, endways on rather than sideways. But the result is just the same. It doesn't really matter if the leads are extremely short as long as they're not so long that uh, there's any chance of them overhanging and shorting to another joint when they're soldered. And you can always trim them down after the soldering if you wish. The circuit boards are through hole plated so the solar joints have a very large area relative to a, a single sided board and it doesn't need a large pad on the underside as the lead is completely surrounded through the circuit board. That's all the uh, resistor leads trimmed and move on to soldering. I'm using very fine, well fairly fine flux cord solder. This is, this is I think 0.7 millimeter. That's the very fine one by comparison, uh, which is a bit too small for most things. It's okay for extremely small joints as uh, hand soldering surface mount, some surface mount things. But it's really too fine for this, you just end up using too much. Uh, the irons 
a Antex 50 watt temperature controlled set for 350 degrees. Somewhere around 350 to 400 degrees is should be fine. A little bit hotter makes it short flow a little bit faster, but uh, it's fine either way. Oh, it is tin lead solder by the way. I don't like uh, lead free. Uh, it doesn't flow as well. It's not as reliable in the long term. I mean, obviously it matters for commercial products where there could end up in landfill and whatever, but for your own projects, there is absolutely no requirement to use lead free. Just allow each joint a second or so after the solder visibly flows for the heat to penetrate and the solder to flow through the plating through a hole. If they flow properly you should see the solder on the top side as well. And how it shows about on camera. You can hopefully see the difference in those I've soldered compared to the unsoldered ones. Trying to get the lighting optimised for the camera view, uh, which unfortunately means I've got a bit of a reflection on the circuit board, so it's slightly different to be difficult to be sure exactly which are pads to be soldered and which are still empty. That's why I'm feeling them occasionally with the tip of the solder, just to make sure there's something sticking through them. Solder leaves a slight flux residue, but as long as you clean your iron regularly, uh, it should stay clear and wash off quite easily with alcohol. You know, if, it, if you leave it built to build up on the iron too long, it may start to scorch and go brown or black. It looks a bit messy, but it'll still clean off. Now I've got uh, a little solder, soldering iron stand with a uh, a damp sponge in it that's usually just out off the camera. On one tip I picked up from one of the online forums was to only use deionized water on a soldering iron sponge or pad uh, so when it dries out there's no residue. If you use normal tap water the the uh, sponge tends to go crispy after a while because of the lime scale building up in it. And I found it was make a lot of difference. Not far, I've done a couple there. I think that's it. And it's easy to see because um, I don't know what I missed one there. You can see the change at the top side where the solder flowed through to the top pads.
Oh no, that. So the lighting is a bit uh, awkward. With the board flat down. One end of that one. Okay, that's uh, the resistors all soldered. The next stage will be fitting the transistors. That will be part three.